So before we continue with the video, I want to talk to you guys about where I got this shirt from, and you probably guessed it, jerseyfifa.com. They have kindly sponsored today's video, and also sent me a load of free shirts for me to check out myself, and I can now really vouch for the quality of these products. They have loads of shirts to offer on the website, so if you are interested, head to the link in the description down below, and check out Jersey FIFA for yourself. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel, where today we are covering a really dismal, dismal, dismal 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 display for Manchester United in their 2-0 defeat to Newcastle a really big game uh made my tactical preview I think it was titled along the lines of why Manchester United have to win this game and that was in the thumbnail etc because the points really were important the this is a six pointer in terms of the top four race Manchester United desperately needed the points and I think Someone should have told the players that. Now, I've got the picture of Rashford on screen here. I'm not saying it was all Rashford. It's just the first picture I found from the game. However, you know, someone should have told these players that they needed points in this game. Because they didn't turn up. Just didn't turn up. We will talk about things from a tactical point of view and kind of... Because I think Ten Hag made some errors in the game. I don't think he impacted the game well with his subs, etc, etc. But when you, you know, field an 11, which just doesn't show up a, again apart from maybe Lissandra Martinez... Against a team which is well drilled, that plays with a great intensity off the ball and is wanting revenge from the cup final, it's and obviously has a lot of quality, it's going to be really, really difficult to beat them. And Manchester United were just terrible. Just so, so poor. Like, I'd love to sit here and tell you, well, at least they've done this well. Or, you know, this little pattern nearly caused some problems. Didn't really. There was nothing for Manchester United in this game at all. And we're going to go through the first goal a little later in the video. And... It's going to be about a minute's worth of footage we're going to go through just for the goal. Because I thought that goal really summed up a lot of what is wrong at Manchester United still. I think Ten Hag's done a really good job so far this season. Addressed a lot of problems and got the team moving in the right direction. What is it? Two losses in the last 26 games. So it's not as bad as it looks. However, what this game did do, I think, is really actually quite nicely summarised the problems that are at the club. Whether it's the lack of commanding goalkeeping play, the playing out from the back from the goalkeeper, the playing out under pressure from Rafael Varane, the lack of controlling first phase midfielder and the lack of a sharp quality striker. It all kind of played into this game and as a result Newcastle were genuinely by far the better team. Like I said tactically I haven't got too much to go through. This There wasn't anything particularly interesting. It wasn't like you know sometimes a team will invert a fullback more than you expect or play a winger super wide which you don't expect. We didn't actually see much of that so this video might actually be a little bit shorter than some, although it depends how long that goal coverage takes. But it's not like Newcastle came here with a tactical master plan. They played well, but, you know, it wasn't a masterclass from Eddie Howe. His players just turned up against players that didn't. And the big problem for me was the Manchester United midfield was horrific. Now, this is where you've kind of got to give Ten Hag a bit of leeway, because this midfield was awful. And on paper, you could almost predict that maybe it was going to struggle. But there weren't really many other options. I mean, the other option was Fred. But when we're going to talk about the problems, Fred doesn't fix those problems. So what were the problems? No control on the ball. McTominay, we know, technically not very good. He's not a player which really makes the movement to get on the ball. Bruno Fernandes, someone that wants to play forward too quickly. And Sabitzer at times, a little bit the same. I think you can get away with Sabitzer in a double pivot, alongside a Casemiro, for example. However, not alongside Bruno Fernandes. And actually, let's address that. Even the fact that Bruno Fernandes is playing this deep probably sums up everything that's wrong with the midfield at the moment. Because Ten Hag just doesn't trust anyone else's ability, technically on the ball, in these deeper areas, to get on the ball without losing it. And that means that Manchester United are essentially playing this game without their starting midfield, any of them. Because you haven't got Casemiro as your holding midfielder, you haven't got Christian Eriksen as kind of your, maybe your dictator or your deep-lying playmaker at times... And you haven't got Bruno Fernandes as your creative attacking midfielder. That's a problem. Now, the other problem is, yes, they weren't good on the ball. And that gives Newcastle a lot of possession. One thing I said shouldn't happen. In my tactical preview, I said Manchester United needed the ball more in this game. Now, the reason I said that was because I was referencing the Carabao Cup final. And saying that Manchester United sacrificed possession in that game. But they were kind of able to because Casemiro is so good defensively. And what I said in my preview is that without Casemiro... They wouldn't be as good defensively, so therefore they needed more of the ball. And they didn't get more of the ball because the control wasn't there, and they were certainly nowhere near as good defensively. Gimarash, in particular, just took control of this game and done exactly what the Manchester United midfielders couldn't do. He slowed down the tempo when he wanted to, he played at his pace, he kept the ball for his side, and 
from a defensive point of view, the Manchester United midfield might have been even worse than what it was in possession because there was literally no protection at all for the centre-backs. This was like going back to last season under Ralph Rangnick and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. No protection at all. Now, you know, we can talk about, oh, Rashford didn't really do anything. He didn't get the ball. He didn't have the opportunity to do anything. He wasn't put in a situation to do anything. Their course didn't hold the ball up. Anthony on the right-hand side, probably the brightest performance apart from Lissandra Martinez, you know, in possession. I thought Anthony was United's best player. But Eric Ten Hag made a decision to take him off, which I thought was a bit weird. I'll come back onto the subs in a second because they just didn't make sense to me. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, I like to try and bring you guys analysis and tactical breakdown and things you may not have noticed. I think actually the problem in this game was glaringly obvious. It was a team that just did not turn up. And it's a worrying theme because it happened against Liverpool. It happened earlier in the season against teams like Brentford. It happened in one of the games against Manchester City. You can't just keep not turning up. There's an underlying problem here. I don't know what it is. It might be the personality of the players. It might be something Ten Hag does in his team talks. I don't know. I'm not in the dressing room. But there is a massive problem here which needs to be addressed. And it's, it's, again, like it's in the thumbnail, it's just the same old problems. We've seen it time and time again this season, but seasons in the past. It's the same problems. It starts from the back trying to play football. The goalkeeper just can't. He also doesn't claim crosses. The amount of crosses that went into the Manchester United box in this game, the six-yard box, and De Gea just stands there on his line. And he then makes a good reflex save from one of them. Good save. But any other goalkeeper in the Premier League doesn't need to make the save because he actually goes and claims the cross. And that's the difference. David De Gea is a good shot stopper still to an extent, but he's not a good shot preventer. That's a problem. That puts more pressure on the centre-backs. And we've got centre-backs here, Lissandra Martinez, not the tallest in the box. And then Rafael Varane in terms of in possession, not very good on the ball in his areas under pressure. Dallow and Shaw, off it. Sabitza and Fernandez not secure enough on the ball. McTominay offering nothing. Rashford going half an hour at a time without seeing the ball. Anthony doing decent but being isolated. And Veghorst non-existent. You're not going to win a football match with that. I'd love to, again, like I said, I'd love to break down the tactics. This wasn't a tactical thing. And the, worry, the worrying thing for me and the concern moving forward is that I don't think this is an anomaly. I don't think this is a one-off. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's, it's very easy, right, as a Manchester United fan to sit there and go, well, you know, why didn't Ten Hag start a more creative midfielder or a more... Um, controlling midfielder sorry is the better term for it there isn't someone else he can bring in you know I've seen people saying on online uh, Ten Hag's getting quite a lot of criticism that you know he needs to fix his problem we've seen it a few weeks in a row now why isn't he fixing his problem you can't just make it up out of somewhere he can't just plonk a little deep line playmaker who's really press resistant really good in the first phase really good at breaking a press he can't just put that in there because it there isn't one this is where he was let down last summer there isn't one. He can't just magic one up out of somewhere, and that's the problem. And that's why it may continue as the season goes on. And what Manchester United have done to themselves is got themselves in a really sticky top four battle now. And that's not where they want to be. A team disconnected at the moment, it feels. The midfield's not connected to the front line. The midfield isn't connected to the back line. The midfield at the moment, basically non-existent. And the problem with that is Christian Eriksen isn't coming back yet. Casemiro is missing two or three three even more games still this could be a problem for the next couple of weeks I'm doing a tactical preview on the Brentford game later and at the moment I'm not sure what I'm going to suggest because the problems will be there because there isn't the personnel to change it there's no one on that bench that you can put on which changes it the shout is maybe someone like Iqbal or Kirby Mainu. I'm not sure genuinely you can probably tell I'm kind of as lost as you guys as to what to suggest because you know what United need is Gimmerish, but the problem is he's playing for the other team. They need a Bernardo Silva, but he's playing for Manchester City. They don't have the profile of midfielder, which can do the job which is needed to control the ball. And like again, Ten Hag can't magic that up out of nowhere, so I'm not sure what can really be done about that. Obviously, as a result, this is leading to the same old problem occurring again and again, and we saw it for the first goal. Now, this first goal, like I said, it's a 60-second clip, and it is so bad that I actually have to split it up into two clips, because... It kind of goes on for that long. And it starts here from the goal kick. Now, if you actually look at the highlight package for the goals, you don't actually see this. However, this kind of, it leads to the goal. The goal doesn't come directly from it, but it only happens because of it. So let's take a look at it. Let me make sure I've got the volume down so I don't deafen you guys. But let's take a look at it. We can see that Manchester United have got the goal kick, right? Pretty simple stuff. And they've got a few players back here ready to play out. We're going to see that Sandra Martinez here is going to take the goal kick. Uh, I've seen people criticising that for a start. 
I don't have a massive issue with it. I think, you know, better goalkeepers do take their own goal kicks, but I don't think this is a massive problem. What is actually the problem is that Lissandra Martinez takes this goal kick short to David De Gea, right? Now, first of all, this is exactly what you expect to see. This ball goes sideways to David De Gea. Completely normal. That pass should go there. And naturally, it is going to trigger Newcastle to come forward. Again, completely expected. We know that Newcastle are going to do that from that sort of situation. Newcastle are going to press from that. But it's nothing special about their press. That's the issue that I've got. You know, they've got a couple of players coming forward here, but it's nothing groundbreaking in the press. But this pass from David De Gea to Varane is so bad. A good goalkeeper, with his ball playing, puts this in front of Varane, something which he can step onto and play with. Not this sort of pass. Let's just have a look at it. Let's just watch the clip play out. It's so slow, and Varane has to take that touch to get the ball out of his feet. And what this does is it invites the Newcastle uh, player to come pressure him. Something I was talking about, again, in my preview, is that because Newcastle often press just with one striker, if you get the ball to the centre-back and you're quick with it, they can then step forward. When a pass is this bad from David De Gea, you can't then play with it quickly because there's no speed on the ball. The next fault we see from here is Rafael Varane, something I've mentioned already. He just isn't great in terms of his press resistance. He's very good in a lot of other areas. But being put under pressure, not really his game. So again, what we see here is a bit of a lack of quality. But also, where was the support? Where is the midfielder that wants to drop deep and offer Varane a pass? Let's just rewind that back a little bit. Let me just take it back a second. McTominay, go get the ball. Drop into this area. Go make something happen, you know. If we're talking about deep midfielders, if we look at the other end of the pitch, Gimmaraes was doing this. He was dropping into these areas. If you watch Manchester City, Bernardo Silva goes and does it. If you watch... Real Madrid, Tony Cruz uh, goes and does it. Barcelona, Frankie Dion does it. Busquets does it. Go offer him something. Varane gets so isolated here. And I just don't know what else he's really meant to do with it. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess. It really is a mess. And I think the ball goes out for a throw in eventually here. It's kind of a bit scrappy out on this side. And the ball goes out for a throw and it just continues from there really. So that's sort of the first problem, right? The team aren't able to play out from the back. David De Gea's pass to Varane is poor and then Varane's technical ability on the ball isn't good enough in a tight space. And there is no kind of first phase midfielder to offer the team something. So that's the first few problems in possession. These next problems are out of possession and how the team reacts. You've conceded a throw in, right? It's not ideal. United could have played out and kind of built an attack themselves, but they haven't left conceded a throw in. Sometimes that happens, but now, you know, react. You know, get around the ball and react to what you've done. Or you can do what Manchester United done. And what I actually want you to focus on here is the Manchester United midfielders. Because Newcastle take this throw in, and let's highlight the midfielders. We've got Sabitzer here, we've got Bruno Fernandes here, and we've got Scott McTominay here. Now, this isn't exactly rocket science to me. If I'm a Newcastle player, I am looking at this channel here. Look at the space that Manchester United are leaving. So yes, the team weren't good enough on the ball, but also off the ball. There's just no protection. If we look at the two Manchester United centre-backs, there is not enough protection stopping you getting at the heart of the defence. A very, very basic principle in football is compact the middle of the pitch and protect your centre-backs. Force teams out wide. And we, again, we just don't see that. And I don't know why. This is something which the players do need to sort out themselves. Eventually, the players kind of crowd back in. They kind of deal with it, but just don't get the ball away. Don't have that close control, that tight ability. This ball can be cleared on several occasions. They just don't get the ball out. Look how long that clip just went on for. They just don't get the ball out. Now you have a chance. Now this ball goes up to Martial. The ball goes from Scott McTominay. It's a decent pass. Up towards Martial. And, you know, make this ball stick. Make this ball stick. Be a big physical number nine. Victor Osman, awesome Harry Kane-esque. Evan Ferguson. Make this ball stick. It doesn't happen. And again, I just feel like this goal really highlights everything that's wrong. We've seen the keeper can't really play out. Varane doesn't have that technical security. There's no midfielder dropping deep to offer the ball. The midfield is then too open from a defensive point of view. The striker isn't sharp enough and good enough to hold the ball up. Although, cut him some slack, it's his first game back. But, you know, it's still a problem with the club. And then from here, the reaction isn't good enough. If we look at Marcus Rashford, get back and defend. Sorry, let me just highlight them for you here real quick. Marcus Rashford, get back into this area and help the team defend. Bruno Fernandes, react positively and defend. And again, it just doesn't really quite happen. Bruno Fernandes kind of goes in for the press. But again, the midfield shape is just constantly not right. Again, if we look at our midfield, I just don't like the shape of it. This, to me, just doesn't look like the right defensive shape. And again, it's, it's just the same problems occurring over and over again. The midfielders just aren't giving enough protection to the defence. Now, there's a bit of luck in here. That pass deflects from Bruno Fernandes. Rafael Varane isn't close enough to Izak. Izak does really very well, actually, to be fair. But Varane needs to be tighter in this area. He isn't 
Isaac gets there, really good technical play, plays the ball in behind. Luke Shaw kind of gets caught out. Rashford hasn't tracked his runner, so Bitter is kind of ball watching as well. The ball goes into this area. Lissandra Martinez kind of can't do much more than that, I don't think. The ball gets dinked up towards the back post. Can someone deal with this ball, maybe? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But then what we've got after that is four players, or three players, I should say, who don't really react. Lissandra Martinez is literally off the pitch, so it's a bit difficult for him to react. But Sabitzer in general, just keep an eye on him. I just think the reaction can be a bit better to read the play and get in that area. Maybe I'm a little bit harsh. But it's just errors after errors after errors. And the problem is, like I said earlier, is I don't see these problems changing because it's going to be the same personnel. And that's the problem. How do you fix it? I don't know. Stay tuned to the channel to find out. I'll try and come up with something. But at the moment, Manchester United are in a little bit of a rut. They're in a little bit of a spell where things aren't quite going right. Now, you know, as I always say, it's not as bad as it looks. It's never as good as it looks. So it looks quite bad at the moment. Manchester United are very capable of now winning the next five games. With players like Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, transitional moments, very, very good. But I think what we still see is that against good teams, Manchester United rely too much on counter-attacks because they can't control the ball for all of the reasons that we've said in this video. And when you rely on counter-attacks but you can't actually defend well in midfield, that's a problem. The team needs Casemiro back, the team needs Christian Eriksen back. Until that happens, it's going to be difficult, but there's still a lot of quality. There's still players like Marcus Rashford, so it might be a right over the next few weeks. We will just have to wait and see. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. You probably didn't enjoy the match. But I will see you in the next one.